Andy Kaufman starred on the TV show Saturday Night Live as well as the TV show Taxi during the early 80s. In 1984, Andy Kaufman sadly passed away from cancer. In 1999, Jim Carrey starred in the movie Man on the Moon, a movie depicting the life of the actor Andy Kaufman. Jim Carrey tells us that he gave up control of himself during this entire project to allow the late Andy Kaufman to inhabit and even possess him. Was it really the dead Andy Kaufman who was in Jim Carrey during the filming of this movie? We're about to get into that right now. When I heard I had the part, I was looking at the ocean, and that's the moment when Andy came back to make his movie. Hello. What happened after was out of my control. When the movie was over, I couldn't remember who I was anymore. So you step through the door not knowing what's on the other side. What's on the other side is everything. Andy, that's enough, Wilfred. I don't like it. I want to do one more. Andy felt it was necessary to stay in the character. He's exactly the way Andy was. It's totally surreal. There is no me, no self. Uh, Jim Carrey is gone. Well, are only masks. As an actor, you play characters, and then if you go deep enough into those characters, you realize that your own character is pretty thin to begin with, you know? And then you suddenly have this separation and go, well, who's Jim Carrey? Oh, he doesn't exist, actually. Alistair Crowley taught that acting and assuming the role of a particular demon was the fastest way to come into contact with a demonic entity. Many actors and actresses have credited their success to possession by a spirit entity. Denzel Washington claims that the reason that he is able to put out such great performances is because he gets on his knees and calls on spirits to possess his body and empower him to play a given role. Basically what I did was got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits. And when I came out, I was in charge. Powerful scene. Powerful scene. It, it was, I couldn't have acted that. I couldn't have written that down and made a decision to play that. The performance by Denzel, that's one of the greatest performances ever. Let me tell you this story. All the speeches in the film were Malcolm's actual speeches. We did the research. So we're doing this one speech. I have my script in front of me. I'm looking at Denzel, I'm also looking at the monitor. He's killing it. So as I'm reading the script along with Denzel, and I, and I see that, well, the speech is over. I'm gonna call a cut. But he keeps going. And he kept going for another five minutes till finally the film ran, ran out of the magazine. And the stuff that he said was better than Malcolm's words. So I finally called cut. I called Denzel. I said, Denzel, uh, that was great. But where did that come from? I mean, you, you went on five minutes after what was scripted. He said, Spike, I don't know. Denzel knew he had to be in a space spiritually where Malcolm come in his vessel. So that's why he was able to do that five minute thing after the script the pages ended. That was, that was Malcolm and him. Malcolm came into his soul right there. I said Denzel, he could not remember what he said. It is well documented that many of the best performances in Hollywood have come through those who open themselves up to be channels of spirits. Robin Williams claims that when acting he becomes possessed and that in the past they would have burned him as a witch. He says, yeah, literally, it's like possession. All of a sudden you're in. You just get this energy that starts going. But there's also that thing, it is possession. It is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where you really can become this other force. Leonardo DiCaprio's director, Agnieszka Holland on Total Eclipse says this, Leo's like a medium. He opens his body and his mind to receive messages coming from another person's life. Johnny Depp has claimed that he is possessed with a multitude of demons. 
He has also said that he will not watch his movies. Why won't he watch them himself? Uh, let, let's talk about the, uh, uh, the, the movie Public Enemies. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a great story. Uh, I saw the movie the other night and really enjoyed it. It was fantastic. Okay. Okay. Because I like it because historically, it's the real deal, you know? And, and have you seen the movie? No, I've not. <laughs> I'm sorry, you've not seen the movie? Not just yet. <laughs> and are you too busy to see it, probably? Uh, you know, I, I, in a way, you know, once, once my job is done on the film, it's really none of my business. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so you deliberately don't look at the finished product? Oh, yeah. I stay as far away as I possibly can. Is that can. right? Yeah. I, I, if I can, I try to stay in as profound a state of ignorance as possible. Uh -huh. Well, you come to the right place. <laughs> I prefer the experience. I mean, m making the film is great. Right. The process is all fine. But then, then he's up there. Right. You know what I mean? But then, then he's up there. Right. You know what I mean? He is saying that it isn't really him in the movie and he can't watch him. Who is this him? Is Johnny opening himself up to demons possessing him? Maybe we should stop watching this stuff ourselves if it is that bad. Heath Ledger, who went to extremes in his quest to become something dark and sinister, took on the part of the Joker, a fictional character of the Batman series. Ledger had become so fixated on becoming the Joker that he lost all mental ability to separate fantasy from reality. In other words, Ledger openly admitted to some that he had at some point became possessed by the spirit of the Joker. My one experience with Heath um, on the film was our scene together in the hospital bed, which is really my only scene with him. And it was, um, I was in the hospital bed that day and I thought, well, I don't really have any lines. What am I gonna do? And I had no idea what was gonna happen. And so I was, got in the bed and they were lighting and Chris was walking around and doing things and then Heath came around and Heath was always in character. So he would come around and you know be talking to himself in the corner like this. And then he would come up, I was laying there and I was watching him the whole time. And he came up and would walk around me like this. And I would watch him and I would watch him. He'd walk around the hospital bed like this. I'd watch him, didn't say anything for maybe an hour. He would walk around. And then we'd watch him, and then he'd start saying his lines. And I would watch him, boom, watch him come around the bed like this. And then, and then all of a sudden, my hand <clears throat> would go up like this, and he cap caught my hand. Jack Nicholson, who also has been known to Channel Spirits, said after Ledger's suicide, shortly after taking the part, that he warned Ledger about it. Now you can have a smoke Jack. Jack, Jack, your left. Jack, any comments on Heath Ledger's dead? And then we launched into the first take and two voices came out of you. Do you remember this? Two voices and they were, they were simultaneous words but they were two levels of sound. And I looked over at you, you were amazed, I was amazed, and you said, well, sure. Cheryl, I'm, I'm many different people. <laughs> I said, no, Jack, you're channeling. Jim Carrey has starred in over 40 films, which include numerous titles, including Ace Ventura, The Mask, Batman, Dumb and Dumber, many titles that have made millions and millions of people laugh. He has been dubbed the king of comedy. Much more than entertaining millions, he has also done several films aimed at children, such as Dr. Seuss, Horton Hears a Who, A Christmas Story, and The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Regarding the movie The Man on the Moon, in which he portrayed the life of Andy Kaufman, Kerry tells us the following. I wondered at times myself whether Andy's possession of me was going to be something I could endure for the length of time it takes to make a movie. When the doc premiered recently at the Venice Film Festival, Kerry had called his method process psychotic at times. I suddenly saw that after I came back to myself, that there really isn't a self to come back to, the actor said of returning to Jim after letting go of Andy. Carrie also said it was a question of a feeling of honoring someone to the point of not feeling worthy to be the person playing that character. He, that is Andy, needs to do it himself. In other words, Jim Carrey is saying 
that the deceased Andy Kaufman needs to do the movie himself. When I heard I had the part, I was looking at the ocean, and that's the moment when Andy came back to make his movie. Hello. What happened after was out of my control. Andy felt it was necessary to stay in the character. He's exactly the way Andy was. It's totally surreal. The true author of the project is Andy and his genius. The fact that he committed so completely to what he did really made that possible and made it essential for me to lose myself, he said. I don't feel like I made the film at all. I feel like Andy made the film. Jim Carrey didn't exist at that time, he said. Andy actually affected the Grinch as well. But just who is really possessing Jim Carrey? Just who is Jim Carrey allowing into himself? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5 that the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. So really, how, if the dead know not anything, can Andy Kaufman be the one possessing Jim Carrey? Furthermore, we read that when a man is passed away, we're told in Job 14.21 that his sons come to honor, and he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. You see, Andy Kaufman doesn't know that Jim Carrey is trying to honor him by letting him play himself and possess Jim Carrey because Andy Kaufman is dead and the dead don't know anything. Therefore, Andy Kaufman does not perceive what Jim Carrey is trying to do and therefore it is not Andy Kaufman whom Jim Carrey is allowing to possess him. You see, talking to the dead is called necromancy in the Bible and the Bible outlaws both of these things as a type of witchcraft in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 9 to 11, it says, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. The Bible tells us why we are not to attempt to talk to these familiar spirits. Just as the devil in the garden deceived Eve, Satan and his angels are seeking to deceive us into not believing the word of God. We're told about talking to the dead in Isaiah 8, 19 and 20, it says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Satan has been deceiving millions through the means of spiritualism, seeking to have us believe we can talk to dead spirits. He comes telling us that the Word of God isn't true, just as he deceived Eve in the garden, that we can keep on sinning and we will still go to heaven despite the plain word telling us that the soul that sinneth, it shall die, Ezekiel 18.20. But furthermore, we are told that in Revelation 12.9, that he deceiveth the whole world, that is the devil. Not only is he deceiving non-Christians, but we are told in scripture that he deceives most of the Christian world as well. That many would have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. In other words, they would profess to be Christians, but live like the world. 1 Timothy 4.1 tells us that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Is it possible that we might be doing this as Christians? Is it possible that you may be doing this with your children? Is it possible that you are allowing your children to watch scripts and movies that are given by demons? Jim Carrey would not leave character even off the set for four months, but furthermore, from the website Deadline Hollywood, we read the following. It says, when it came time to share notes with Ron Howard on how the Grinch stole Christmas, Carrie was nowhere to be found. So Ron got a call from Andy Kaufman to say that Jim wasn't available. And Ron jumped right in and Andy gave the notes for the Grinch script, Carrie recalled. Andy gave the notes, Carrie said. Jim is telling us that he was possessed by Andy Kaufman when he received the script for the famous movie, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. But if Andy Kaufman is dead, and as the Bible says, the dead know not anything, if the Bible is true, then it was not Andy Kaufman who gave the notes for the script to the Grinch. It was a spirit. The Bible calls these spirits fallen angels. And that is what gave the script for the Grinch who stole Christmas. The principles and morals taught to children in these movies include complaining, selfishness, strife, lying, and many other evils that will keep them from the kingdom of heaven. And it is none other than the seducing spirits of devils that are seeking to deceive and to destroy. You see, in the book of Hosea, we're told that there is a lack of something in the land. 
Hosea 4.1 says, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. There's no knowledge of God in the land, and that leads to a lack of morality in the land. Verse 2 tells us that swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. In other words, no morality in the land, and we are told that the land shall mourn. Verse 3. Finally, in verse 6, regarding this lack of knowledge of God in the land, we are told the following. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. What a sad thought. Our children will be lost because of our own lack of knowledge and failure to educate our children in the word of the Lord, and thus a failure to recognize that our children are being educated by familiar spirits or demons who are putting out these amazing scripts and performances through mediums such as Jim Carrey and others. Demons drawing hearts away from God and His Word. Some of us when we were younger were given wholesome shows like Highway to Heaven and Little House on the Prairie. Or was it really good and wholesome? Some of us might be shocked to discover that Michael Landon received some of these scripts from his dead father. Landon said, I felt my father's presence with me helping me to commit to paper the feelings I had. I really heard my father speaking to me from the other dimension, Michael Landon. But really, who is it that was inspiring this work? It wasn't his father because the dead know not anything. It was a familiar spirit, but it was not his family. The author of all these scripts was a seducing spirit. Most of these Christian movies have no talk of sin, judgment to come, nor call to true repentance as well as the promise of a living a life free from the bondage of sin thanks to the blood shed by Jesus Christ. And many of them are inspired by another spirit. Some of them are so incredible and feel good that you would believe they are of God, yet they speak nothing of Jesus or the cross, nor the power in it, nor what it is to deny ourselves. But in the end, they will lead us from believing and trusting His Word. Jim Carrey may not realize that he is being misled by another spirit. The spirit wants Carrey to believe as Eve that he is God. It is a pantheistic, New Age belief to believe that God is in you, and you really need only to develop the God within yourself. I believe in an energy of God, an yeah. energy of, you know, everything is divine. You yeah. know, there's just not, there's no, there's no thing that isn't divine. Everything is divine, and I'm that. They talk about omnipresence in church, and nobody really thinks about what that means. What it means is every cell of your body is God. And that is really the age-old lie from the serpent in the Garden of Eden that is rampant throughout these New Age religions which subtly teaches you that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, Genesis 3, 5. Jesus said, Our Father who art in heaven, not our Father who art in everything or everywhere. These spirits are lying spirits and only by study of the word will we truly know the truth. Jim Carrey has been dubbed the king of comedy, a king of the earth. You see, these demons are looking for men like this to be mediums of their message and lies. In Revelation 16, 14, it says they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. They are going to the kings of the earth such as Jim Carrey, the proclaimed king of comedy, just as in a prior video on Oprah Winfrey that I did where she dubbed herself the queen of all media and how she tells us that her inspiration was dead people as well, and how she emptied herself and allows these spirits to enter into her. I will attach a link to that video below for more. The demonic spirits are working through these mediums to deceive millions, and most who watch these films are laughing and amazed by the performances, but they have no idea of the origin behind them, nor the intent of the seducing spirits that give the scripts for them. Spend your uh, first half of your life acquiring and adding thinking you can add to yourself mm -hmm. and and it looks great I mean it looks great when you got a cool car and you got good, nice clothes and mm -hmm. you know and you're uh, and you've done something that people admire mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> but it can never 
fulfill you. You can never be happy. Don't miss the next video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Press the little bell beside the subscribe button to get reminders for when the next video comes out. Also check below for the links I mentioned in this video. And if you would like to help our ministry or you are interested in having us come to speak in your area, please visit our website www.thethirdangelsmessage.com. Feel free to donate or contact us. God bless you. See you next time.